Yeah. Hello all. Um, good morning and a warm welcome to today's uh, text to image workshop by Cellstrat, uh, which is part of the workshop series for the RV AI hackathon. So today topic or uh, the workshop is uh, on the uh, text to image application, um, namely Canvas AI. And uh, this basically is an image synthesis tool uh, powered by um, the latest A technologies. Uh, so text to image generation uh, is basically the process of converting uh, text into uh, high quality artistically rendered images. And these are like uh, this, is an uh, generative uh, um, AI model. And uh, this is a condition based on the uh, user's input text. So the model takes the user's um, input text and then the image is sort of generated, uh, which is correlated to the text. And this has been the buzz in recent times. You have like a series of image generation model starting from DALI 2 to uh, stable diffusion and uh, um, many other um, uh, such models. And what is so interesting about this text to image generation is it has a wide applications uh, ranging from um, advertising um, industries and graphic design um, applications where mostly the creativity or creating new content is basically the crux of that uh, task. Uh, now this um, AA model uh, can actually create uh, fantastic images as you uh, many of you would have noticed in, in the recent um, a newsletters and blogs and videos such that um, it not only can be applied only to creative industries but it can also be extended to scientific and research fields like medical imaging and uh, computer graphics um, where you can actually generate synthetic data to train your uh, models uh, so and so uh, going on um, so the, uh, what are the various scenarios this uh, text to image generation can be applied as uh, as I mentioned you can synthesize new content uh, either be an be image or even it can even generate a, a complete video based on the text that you give so it could synthesize image from your textual descriptions and uh, um, it can also create uh, illustrations, animations, and you know various other visual content in creative areas. Another interesting uh, application is uh, visual question answering. Uh, so, what is visual question answering? Is like you have an image or a video, and you ask the AA model um, certain questions. And the AI model sort of extract the intelligence from the image in the videos and give you the right answer. So take, for example, um, you can ask questions such as what objects are present in the image? What are the salient locations of these objects in the image? Then you can also ask some relation questions like uh, what object is present right to another object or what object is behind another object. So those sort of relative questions can also be asked. And the AI model, which is being generated or trained on this sort of visual question answering task, will be able to give you the right answer. Another would be the reverse of text to image, which is you know image to text translations where, uh, for example, you can um, automatically create captions for your images, uh, or it can actually give an image and generate uh, 
a complete a description of an image right or you, you can also generate a sort of a um, you know complete movie script based on just you know sequence of images or uh, you know videos so there are like many other applications you can um, uh, think of so uh, this is a really and very active and you know the scope of this uh, uh, uh text to image generative generative AI in you know in, in, a, in a basic sense is huge and this is attracting many investors to actually invest in this um, uh, sort of iphone moment of AI. so in coming years i think uh, the AI is going to go to a next level altogether so today we will see like how we can build a useful application, how we can actually give these applications to the end user's hand so that um, you know the end user, either he be an advertising company or sort of other creative companies like movie creators, they can use this tool to actually generate splendid, you know, very high quality images, you know, instantly. Just imagination is what you require. So you give some imaginative, sort of input text prompts and the model comes up with sort of you know surprisingly pleasing uh, um, uh, images that we will sort of witness it in a moment so that's basically the you know the use case or the scenarios what this application is all about and uh, so so we have the task of text to image generation and uh, we um, created an application on this topic and uh, we designed this application to actually address three major activities so uh, one is um, the enhanced prom the second one is the, the core of this application which is generating images from the prompt that the user gives and the third is like how we can further improve the quality of the generated images by a certain post process uh, based on uh, a so this enhanced prompt will actually uh, sort of extend the user prompt so the thing is there is something called prompt engineering so this prompt engineering is going to be or expected to be a very key skill in going forward because all of these generative models are sort of directly correlated to the the prompt you give to these generative models the more relevant and more better the quality of this prompt the better the content that is generated by this generative AI models so this generating this relevant prompt seems to be a sort of a new skill suddenly uh, popped up uh, after this sort of uh, generative model scheme so you can see certain people can generate very high quality content uh, because they actually can think of very relevant prompts so this sort of became another you know uh, user skill now how can we take this and make it democratize so you can even further and leverage this AI models like GPT uh, or GPT-3 and then you can just give some basic prompt and this prompt basic prompt will be taken and it will be extended by GPT-3 to give you the enhanced prompt and this enhanced prompt will be then fed into the generative models and uh, it generates like splendid artistically rendered high quality images from the uh, enhanced prompt. Now, once you have the generated images, uh, we just uh, further post process it. Uh, you can do like many such post processing. Uh, one of is it like, can you increase the resolution of the image? Uh, can you go from low resolution to very high resolution? Even you can go up to like 4K um, uh, sort of resolution. Um, and then can you like fix some of the unwanted artifacts that is generated from these images like for example there will be some weird face characteristics coming out of these images you can use a face fix uh, to so, sort of uh, improve the quality 
So we just show you an example of only the super resolution in this application. Uh, but uh, you can take this idea and then you know you can extend it further um, in your uh, pitch in this RVA hackathon. Okay. Um, yeah. So going forward. So this application that we built, uh, this is the tech stack that we have used. Uh, so just to give you a sort of recap, if you would have followed our RVA hackathon series, the first uh, um, workshop was on the uh, meeting assistant AI, right, by Bowish. So if you would have already um, attended that session, um, this tech stack is, would be very familiar for you and this entire text to image text tag is also uh, mostly similar to the meeting assistant AI. okay so the only the core ai engine part right that is different so if you see in the meeting assistant um, we have used uh, whisper a um, uh, whisper uh, ai model and uh, uh, we use sentence transformers and we use chat gpt3 right so the whisper takes the audio or the video and converts the audio in the uh, file into a uh, text which is basically like speech to text model and then the gpt3 runs insights to basically summarize the text into sort of uh, uh, key um, uh, sentences then you can run like sentence transformers like to convert this extracted text into a list of actions so that was mostly like uh, meeting uh, assistant uh, namely like meet c uh, so in this also we followed the same pattern if you can see like the uh, the back end is mostly the uh, aa back end so we have like three models uh, running uh, one after another the first one is the prompt extent and then the second one is the stable diffusion and then third is the super resolution all these aa models are hosted on cellstat hub and uh, that actually makes uh, deploying these aa models easier with just like few um, uh, cli commands uh, so that is taken care for you and the front end is um uh it's next js is just based on react and then the style is um is, is given by tailwind css and some dashboard components from tremor and this front end is hosted on uh, netlify and uh, uh this is also like sort of a serverless tech stack and this um cellstat have actually leverages um sagemaker asynchronous um endpoints which actually um, uh, sort of um, speeds up the inference um, uh, uh, using a GPU, okay? And it would also do asynchronous so that it is scalable and uh, um, and the performance also is better, okay? And uh, how is this, what is the workflow of this application um, that, the user gives a text prompt and as i mentioned it goes into a prompt extend module and this prompt extend takes the user's text prompt and it enhances the prompt and this enhanced prompt is fed into the stable diffusion model and it generates the uh, the image and then once uh, you up if you want to upscale the image this uh, generated image is passed into the su super resolution model and it uh, returns an upscaled image and that you can also download it okay that's a very simple uh, you know, sort of intuitive workflow um, like anybody can use um, because uh, um, question so prompt extend uh, is a mandatory component to enhance the prompt or directly random text by humans can be fed to stable diffusion yes um it can be fed into directly also yeah but uh the prompt extent will help you to generate better quality images so it is all almost always recommended huh yes it is better to go through uh, prompt extent 
got it but that is a choice like it's a flag so if you uh, if you click this prompt extent it will generate a um, extended prompt or you just take the text and that prompt extent will be sort of uh, disabled when you click directly the generated images so it will take that whatever the text is there in the text box it will take that and generate the image similarly uh, up resolution or super resolution is it always required or is optional it's also optional so whatever the generated image that's coming out of stable diffusion stable diffusion right it would be at the resolution of uh, maximum 768 by 768 now if you want to go to let's say hd resolution of 1280 by 760 or even more then you can go for like 2x or 4x upscaling yeah one question in the last slide what is the demo about demo yeah i think this is mainly for dashboard components this is mainly okay. the ui okay yeah. um right so i think we can continue here Yeah. So just to give you a um, little bit detail on the AI models used in this text tank, uh, I'll just give you a very high level uh, um, a brief overview. Uh, and uh, I will not get into the technical details of this model. Um, but however, uh, there was a previous workshop on diffusion models by Bowish, which he has given a very high a very detailed uh, explanation of how this diffusion model works okay so um so stable diffusion is uh if i'm not wrong is only open source um, um you know generative model based on diffusion the other models like dali to image and are sort of not it released uh, into open source um yeah, so that is why stable diffusion is interesting because then you can use this and build on top of it to actually uh, create um, a generative AI products out of it. And what does da what it does is it's it's basically a text to image generation and uh, uh, the image generation is conditioned based on the input text, and it can accurately convert the text descriptions into a uh, very high quality uh, artistic images and uh, yeah the the it it is is basically a deep learning model so it has multiple components uh, for example it has an a unit um, uh, model running on it so it has a text encoder which is based on clip if you know open a clip and and also like it also a, a encoder decoder based architecture to actually convert um the latency vector into one uh, output image so we will see in the next slide like what are the different components uh yeah so that is pretty much stable diffusion and uh, basically like if you see um, stable uh, or in general the generative uh, models you have like different class of uh, generative models uh, so if originally it started with auto encoders and then there was variation auto encoders and then there was a moment where this gan was uh, uh, was very much used across uh, this generative AI. Now, in recent, like last one or two years, this diffusion model has become the go-to model for generating um, uh, generating images, basically. Uh, yeah. So then, um, if you see at a high level, uh, into to insight into what this stable diffusion does is um it it takes a, a noise image 
right it just takes a random noise um, and then it takes uh, sort of removes the noise iteratively uh, which is passed in uh, which is done by the diffusion model it removes the noises and finally after several uh, uh, iterations it is able to remove the noise and uh, uh, produces the uh, images um, so how this diffusion model is trained is like um, they take a, a, a data set of images and they corrupt these um, images you know systematically with uh, different levels of noises and then uh, they train this uh, a model in uh, and the model learns uh, to actually uh, remove these noises from these images and reproduce the original images and you know that is how it has been trained on so when you give an uh, so after uh, the, the the diffusion model is trained if you give any random noise and uh, um, and it, it will be able to denoise it and produce the original image you know that's how that's what sort of you know uh, described in this animation uh, there's two things yeah yeah, could you please explain like how it works? Like, what is this noise? I'm not able to get it. Like, you were saying is the same noise will be for every single image, whatever we want to generate, or for every different image, or uh, the noise will be different. Yeah. So, uh, so for uh, there is in the uh, diffusion model training, there is two process: the forward uh, diffusion process and the um, yeah, reverse diffusion process. Okay, so we have like huge data set of images and in the forward diffusion process, what we do is we slowly add random noise to these images in a series of time steps. Okay, at the end of forward diffusion process, you will have this, all these images end up with some uh, noise distribution. Now, you then you start the reverse diffusion process then you slowly undo or remove the noise at every step and at the end of this reverse diffusion process you will be having the original image okay and this is how the diffusion models are trained to denoise the noisy images and can generate images by iteratively denoising pure noise so in your data set you have variety of images uh okay so it learns all this it it learns to sort of um you know uh, reproduce these images from pure noise so when you give a diff uh, just give a, a random noise what it will do is it can do two things one is conditional generation one is unconditional generation in unconditional generation when you give a pure random noise it will generate some random images okay but in conditional uh, generation, you condition it with certain text input. So then what it will do is it will generate a image which has a semantic similarity to your text that you have given as an input. Okay, this is a very deep topic. It, it is not possible to cover in this uh, workshop. This workshop is mainly for uh, product. So that's why like there was a previous workshop um, like three like last month in december by bovish where he has uh, sort of deep dive into this and explained every step uh, of this diffusion in very detail probably yeah, i drop a link the, to the link i have already sent in chat that particular uh, video yeah okay awesome thanks yeah i think in the interest of time we will uh, move on so so high level of workflow of this stable diffusion model is like that you give a, a text then you pass it into a text encoder so the text encoder in this case will be a clip uh, encoder and then it will convert this text into a uh, feature vector right it's just just a series of numbers to convert a string into a um, sort of a numerical representation then you have a random noise then uh, of size 64 cross 64 okay 
and then what you do is you concatenate this um, a text encode uh, encoded vector and with this random um, uh, 64 cross 64 uh, uh, image then pass it into this diffusion model so this diffusion model through iteratively it will denoise this image uh, and then finally it will uh, have a 64 cross 64 image which is completely free of uh, noise okay and what it additionally does is it denoises in such a way that this 64 cross 64 uh, latent vector is correlated or have a semantic similarity to this text also okay and then what you do is you use a decoder to convert this 64 cross 64 uh, latent vector into a full size image for example it could be a five 512 cross 512 image or 768 cross 768 image. Okay. Uh, that does. Hello. Yes. Uh, the noise patch that you are uh, looking at uh, is that uh, the same for all the uh, inputs? This is a random noise. Okay, so that randomness uh, will that uh, differ for each of the iterations or? Yes, it will it'll uh, differ. Like, yeah. So, since it is a random, but if you don't want to uh, be random, you can give a sort of a seed so that every time you get the same sort of images. Okay, so, uh, so that's a very like, tricky, tricky one. So, uh, if we start with two objects, and you apply the noise to that, and uh, you go to the forward pass and get the uh, noisy image. And then no, if you are uh, doing Gopi the reverse right. one. So text yeah. is the main input here, right? Noise is just random, just to have a baseline image box, uh, a 64 by 64 uh, pixel size image box. So that doesn't matter. Uh, what matters is the input text, right? So the input text is encoded in intelligent way on top of that 64 by 64 noise patch. So uh, so random noise doesn't matter actually because text is the main input actually. So it is uh, interpolated on the noisy you know uh, noisy patch basically using the text. So let's say I am riding a horse versus I am going to the moon. So based on two different text obviously the representation on that image patch will be completely different and different image will be generated relevant to the text so noise doesn't matter it just needs an empty canvas box that's it okay okay thank you yeah so then um prompt extent is you know it's a simple uh, GP2 model that is basically trained on data set of stable diffusion prompts. Okay, so they have like collected stable diffusion prompts that could actually generate very high quality images. So um, since this uh, model is sort of fine tuned on this stable diffusion prompts, even if you give uh, not so well designed, you know, well engineered prompts it could able to take your very basic prompt and extend it to a prompt that will work better with stable diffusion. Okay, that was mainly the idea. Okay, so this is achieved by augmenting the original prompt that given by the user um, in with different attributes like, um, so that it actually will uh, help the stable diffusion model to generate better quality images. Otherwise, with very basic prompt, it um, you know you might not see the 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 full power of stable diffusion. So, Bismillah, why not GPT three API, which is more sophisticated? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. This particular uh, uh, model that we use is based on GPT two, but you could use like uh, GPT three or any other uh, model even like uh, some are uh, using chat gpt mm. sort of things yeah okay yeah.
yes it's possible to use different variant of gpts yes Okay, uh, that's one thing. So it's just a like add-on um, module. Uh, uh, and, and then the post-processing module. Um, this post-processing module can contain like um, like multiple post-processing steps, right? Um, um, so one we what we have shown here as an example is uh, super resolution post-processing. Uh, because the original resolution of stable illusion would be like max to max 768 by 768. Um, but if you want like very high resolution HD or um, full HD or even 4K, like uh, you can do like 2x, 4x sort of upscaling um, and get a, like a high resolution images. So for that, we have used um, um, enhanced uh, super resolution generative adversarial network uh, 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 ASR Canyon short which is basically uh, the main task it doing is uh, it's upscaling the low, low resolution images With all these are like sort of uh, pre-trained uh, models uh, we did not train on any such data sets uh, be it stable diffusion or prompt extent or GAN so we saw uh, we are just you know um, um, integrating these different modules to build one uh, product uh, on top of it. Yeah, I think that is pretty much what this application has. Now we will see a demo. Uh, maybe I can give this link in the chat so that people can. Right, but probably before that, I'll just give a demo. Um, so you can, if you go to this link, cellstat uh, uh, stable diffusion dot app, um, you will see this Unreal uh, application, and what it does is the text to image generation and also the post processing like upscaling images, and this is a, a, a text box to enter the prompt, and uh, after entering a prompt, you can either enhance the prompt, and after enhancing the prompt, you generate images. So we have given some basic settings here, like what is the size of the image you want, uh, uh, the generated image size, and what is the guidance scale, and some random uh, number. Uh, this is basically used as a random seed um in, in in the stable diffusion okay and what does this guidance scale means is that uh it is basically saying like how much how much uh you know how much guidance that text input should be uh, uh given to the stable diffusion model so the higher the guidance scale uh, means that the image generated by the stable diffusion model is very closely related to the text prompt that we give. But when you give very high guidance, okay, it will be very close to your text, but probably the image quality will be uh, reduced because it is sort of a trade off between um, generating a good quality, uh, you know, artistically rendered images or to keep the semantic similarity to your text okay so but if you reduce the guidance scale then uh, of course your quality will be good but it may not be what you actually intend to reproduce okay it will be more of a sort of unconditional image generation okay so how much you want to guide the text for the image generation that is the guidance scale okay and then once you have it, uh, you basically have the image and upscale it, you will get the upscale image. So these are the very simple intuitive application we have. So now we will quickly see, let's say I'm saying from that, um, riding a horse in moon, see? And then what you can do is like, you can enhance the prompt. 
So now it what it says is okay. You gave a very basic prompt astronaut not riding a horse, but I added more attributes to it. I want in the style of Frank Frazetta. I don't know who is Frank Frazetta. Probably an artist or some sort of designer. Um, I need in HD, 4K, quality, uh, 4K high quality, um, sort of dramatic lighting, high detail. So these are all the different attributes has been appended to this uh, original prompt so that the, the stable diffusion will generate uh, good quality images so, so yeah, now this is... prompt uh, is is calling one gpt2 model which converts a basic text into uh, this kind of text which correct. has more attributes specified okay it's correct uh, okay. and after that like um, you just generate image So the API would be warm, so it would uh, it should return fast, right? Yeah. So the 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 average time for uh, generating will be like fifteen to twenty seconds. Okay, pretty good. Yeah. So as you can see that uh, these are the images, some images. You can just what you can do is either you can download it from here. Okay. Um, and you can probably like save it into this. Um, you can also like, I want, I like this image compared to the other. I just want to generate an upscaled image of it. Then you just click that and click upscale. then it will generate an upscale images then you can download that as well so now you can see it just generate a very high resolution image you can save that as well so you can see this 4x um times nice and just see the resolution because it is high resolution And this is sort of low resolution, as nice. we can see, it's sort of pixelated. Yeah, I think that's all the demo. I'll just post this link in the chat. So, awesome. You can try it. Hello, Bismillah. I have a question. Yes. So, uh, if I want to customize this uh, uh, images, for example, I want to put my photo there or something and uh, create a new model. So, how does that work? Or can we do that in the API? Yeah, yeah. So, here uh, it is not possible. Uh, but, like in future scope, we will include that we can do like image to image translation um we can add in paint capabilities so what i can do is i can just crop this astronaut here right and then i will give your photo there okay and then what it will do is it will in paint your photo in this image and it will look like uh, Niraj, Nir Niraj is sitting, uh, riding a horse and monster sort of thing. Yeah, it can do it. Yeah. So oh, that's okay. inpainting, inpainting extension, huh? Yes, correct. So uh, in fashion design, a lot of use is coming. Uh, so like uh, superimpose if i'm a fashion designer i want you know uh, models to showcase my fashion uh, uh, items so this uh, sd can work there i believe yeah. uh, but uh, the question would be let's say i have a specific dress item as a fashion designer 
and i feed that and i say make a model wear my you know let's say a, a dress a, a lady's dress or something so so the question would be will the dress get altered or the dress can be preserved without alteration mm. so i don't want the dress to be altered right because that's my fashion product i just want it to be superimposed on a model or a silhouette a mannequin mm. i think there are products like that using sd like astria and many others um, mm. there is also concept of negative prompts right uh, so that is not there here yet yes so you can add a a negative prompt text box here and uh, basically then the image generation guidance right uh, it will be guided against this prompt i think okay. we have a uh, um, negative prompt guidance inbuilt into it now but they are like sort of uh, uh, very uh, default and negative prompts like uh, uh, to prevent users from sort of using this uh, image generation to generate some you know some some sort of unwanted content that we have taken care of when we build this api but they are like very basic uh, so, sort of uh, protective negative prompts but do you want to any use a specific negative prompt and uh, you can also do it here put it on one more box and enter your negative prompt here yeah that is possible here. okay interesting so english is the hottest new programming language uh, so based on how we create the text it can create different imagery What is uh, the guidance factor? What will that do? Guidance scale. Yes, as I mentioned, right? It will tell you like uh, how much this text should guide your image generation. So the more or higher the guidance value, the images has very close semantic similarity to your text but it will sort of reduce the creativity of this model and it will just try to stick to the meaning of this text right so here you can see this although you say astronaut riding on a horse uh, it doesn't it still had a lot of creativity right so uh, in, in actually rendering the images so those uh, uh, those things will be reduced. The higher the guidance scale, less it will, more it will follow the textual prompt. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that is. Uh, um a demo part and uh, what we can do is like for this uh, hackathon um uh, this app doesn't have any kind of um, authentication and user management capabilities so the backend is mainly the aa components right um yeah. and uh, like anybody can access this app and they can just um, um, use it so you can add authentication and user management on top of this app that is one feature scope um and then like you can add like many more post processing step in addition to the uh, you know upscale that we have uh, demoed here so you can use let's say face fixing post processing step and we can also add image to image translation capabilities um and you can also add uh, in paint capabilities to this so if there is like a lot more um things we can extend this application 
and you can actually then end up in creating a full suite of tools uh, with a lot of post process do we have any control on this particular uh, diffusion models? Like something we wanted to create or wanted to get related to images which we want or something? Because mostly we use the APIs and other things, and we don't have any control over that. What, what, what kind of image it will be generating? Yeah, sorry, can you repeat? There was some noise I couldn't fully follow here. Actually, he was asking that uh, do we have any control over the stable diffusion models? Because it yeah. will generate the actual. Generate the uh, model as per uh, uh, the what it's been trained on, and we don't have any control what kind of images it will be generated. Yeah, if you want to generate images specific to a certain use case or like a certain domain, then you have to fine tune this um, uh, model to that particular data set. So this will still generate images that look similar to what this stable diffusion model was trained on, right? It was trained on that Lion 5 billion data set like that. Mm -hmm. So, and those images are mostly like, you know, animation pictures and those sort of things. And that is why you see like most of the images are sort of like, uh, 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 sort of looking cartoonist animation based. And, and like similar to this, uh, uh, for the bird, we were having a different different models for the different different use cases. So in similar for the stable diffusion, diffusion also, do we have a similar kind of a use cases uh, for different models for different kind of a use cases? Which are already yeah. pretend like. Yeah, correct. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if there are like fine tuned uh, uh, version of this stable diffusion for different use cases. Uh, uh, but uh, you can like take this model and then fine tune it on your specific use case. Like a, like you will fine tune it, fine tune any of the AI model, right? Be it an BERT or be it a um, uh, vision transformer, be it a ResNet. Yeah, this is possible to fine tune this. Mm -hmm. so, so have you tried that? Have you tried that? Mm -hmm. Have to use Dream Booth, right? Or we can we do it without Dream Booth for incremental training of SD? No, I, I didn't try it. I'm not also not um, fully aware of such uh, things. Mm -hmm. But sort of uh, maybe try it in future. Okay. I think, uh, as Vivek mentioned, I think there is a dream booth. Um, yeah, probably you can explore that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is our first level product launch for this SD uh, generative AI product. And we'll be in Cellshot continuing to announce enhance it. So I have shared the automatic 111 web GUI link, which has already given a, a GUI extensions for a variety of computer vision use cases on SD product. Uh, so we'll be adding both custom model training capability with or without Dream Booth and extending the SD product. And also, we'll be providing extensions like in painting and many others, which automatic uh, 111 also shows. So, this is first level product launch of this today. And we will continue to announce this product over the coming weeks and months. And of course, then we are marketing this to, uh, you know, designer, design companies, and media and creators and so forth. So, so it will be a goal to develop industrial products uh, starting from here. Any other questions, uh, folks? Okay, so uh, are we done? Uh, uh yes i think that is all i have for today yeah so nice uh, session so hackathon so, hey, hey, teams i encourage you to register for the hackathon and looking forward to uh, seeing you uh, at rvc campus next weekend for this hackathon and you can of course take help from all of our mentors here who have been presenting these workshops for your respective entries uh,
Any final questions or comments, audience? OK, so we do have Professor Rajshree here from RV College of Engineering, who is the coordinator uh, for this event from Department of CSC at, uh, at uh, RVC. Ma'am, any comments? Uh, yeah, uh, wishing to see all of you at the hackathon. All the best. Thanks, man. Uh, so I've shared the hackathon link. Uh, do not forget to register. Uh, and uh, we are very excited. Almost uh, close to 100 people are expected, maybe uh, 20, 25 teams at least, or 30, 40 teams. So it's going to be an amazing event uh, with the 75,000 rupees prize money. Uh, so uh, do, uh, do not forget to register. Uh, thanks so a lot. A, so it's an online event or it's in person? No, no, it is offline. It is offline at RV College campus. Uh, I know, Bhushan, you are out of town. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so uh, wish you could come over, but uh, maybe another time. But yeah, if you can come, that would be nice. So uh, OK, so this is at RVC, which is on Mysore Road, Bengaluru, uh, next Friday, Saturday. And uh, we have Boeing. Boeing is the lead sponsor for this event, and it's supported by Bangalore Bio Innovation Center, which is an undertaking by uh, government of Karnataka. So we have uh, extensive support, uh, both from private and public sector, and looking forward to this. Thanks a lot, Bismillah. Fantastic presentation. And uh, we'll see you all see you later. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bye.